Welcome back. I'm currently with my mate John. It's 10 o'clock at night and we are in the Gibraltar uh, Northern Defences. It's, I will admit, it's slightly creepy this evening. We can see Gibraltar Centre just in front of us and for the next, probably for the next mile we're going to be underground exploring this man-made cave system. So we came here earlier today, they're, they're doing some work, I think they're, it's a combination of renovations and they're laying some new water mains. Um, but we, see, we spoke to, who I think was the site manager, um, who, was, who was just happy to, to let, us, let us in and uh, gave us a closing time, so we're, yeah, we're happy to oblige. But yeah, phenomenal set of, of primarily 18th century defences um, that have been used considerably in the Second World War. Uh, so we're now, the, as you saw from the sign, coming into the King's Gallery, the miniature range. So this would, this would have been for sub-calibre rifles, um, for zeroing and just general shooting practice for the soldiers here. 2-2, uh, possibly number 8 rifles. And these tunnels, of course, um, were, were host to a num great number of sieges um, from across the Spanish frontier in the 18th century. And it really does just give you a sense of scale and, and what it would be like down here, you know, confined um, under constant threat of attack um, and constant attack. Uh, firing back, food, water, running out, ammunition. So John's gone on ahead, so I feel, I feel somewhat on my own at the moment. I'm pretty sure I know how to get, get, get back. But there's always the risk of, of getting lost. So a lot of these buildings um, were constructed uh, during the Second World War when, when troops moved back in and reoccupied the tunnels. The, this area, this large chamber here, is um, built as the as the plaque says by the Second Battalion King's Regiment. This is this was built inside Star Chamber, and this was their 1941 Battalion HQ, which is very strange. This this complex of bricked buildings, uh, yeah, it would have had corrugated tin roofs. So yeah, here's a thankfully I find managed to find John again. So not not totally on my own. And then coming down, so so at all the entrances to the tunnels are these these really thick um, blast walls, just to to stop any bra for a blast if the tunnel tunnel came under attack. It's an absolute war, and so I'm currently outside, but heading, heading into this. This pillbox, uh, three firing positions. You can you can see hopefully the, the angle of these positions. Um, just looking down, and in, in front of us out here is the is the frontier of the um, the airport and the, and the Spanish border. So yeah, positions positions like this all across the northern face of the rock. And in here, if you can, I really hope you can see that. But look at the geological formation, just a natural fissure in the rock going up 50, 60 metres. Uh, been modified and, and turned into the cave, as we know. Oh, back into, 
in the star chamber. Oh God, John's making his way up to the top. So there, there, there are numerous entrances and exits into the cave. Um, and most of them are, um, are sort of emblazoned with these beautiful um, painted signs. We've, tr we've, we've tried to work out when they'd, when they'd be from. Um, so the, the, the 7, 1790 engraved into the, into the rock and the, the rest of the letters painted, likely painted, we, th we think, um, painted in the, the Second World War, just to uh, so that people really know where they are, because navigation in here was, was pretty impossible. As I say, yeah, many entrances and exits. Most of them sealed up, blocked up. Um, just through development of the rock, for safety reasons, rock falls, whatever. Coming in here, St. Patrick's Chamber. MMG, medium machine gun. So we're trying to work out, we think the Vickers. Um, so there's a in St. Patrick's Chamber which we'll go into now, we think, had um, had vickers along this face of the wall. Another, another blast wall to weave, weave my way around. And here we go, look at this, look at this gallery. Incredible vaulted ceiling. This would have been a, a two-storey gallery when it was constructed. Um, probably in the late late 18th century and early 19th century. Seventeen seventeen eighty eight. This is the third Aurelian gallery. Seventeen eighty eight. And this history is something the Gibraltarians are very proud of. Uh, with with tunnels and tours and history tours being, being promoted um, and a lot of work done to preserve any of the remaining ordnance and any remaining uh, tunnels as well. Now this one, this Commons Hall 1789 was I think has some of the most special, spe special, special features we have here. I'm going to show you why. So, if we look at this wall here, we have a plaque, just like we saw at the battalion headquarters, 1943, in the concrete. Unfortunately, graffiti has, has got in the way. But looking over here, we have laurel wreath, and we have VMG, the Vickers machine gun. So most likely, a detachment of the machine gun corps, was based on here with not one, two, but four Vickers machine guns stationed here. And at each of these posts, so we have two front posts for the front legs of the tripod. Um, we have this position at the back here, which probably had some sandbags to bed in, um, bed in the third leg. And we have a, a sketch map or a range card painted into the concrete wall here. We've got some bearings. We have, so this is the, the runway we think, out here. We have the Spanish mountains in the distance um, and we also have the bay here. So this is the view from this post. And if we go down to the other two positions, they also have similar range cards and, and paintings on them as well. See such a small aperture for the machine gun to fire through. Incredibly well protected. Not much headroom, but remember this is in an 18th century, um, probably an 18th century muzzle loading um, cannon position, which would have been occupied during some of the many sieges. Yeah, a fascinating little gem in Commons Hall. 
part of the northern defenses in Gibraltar. So we're going to leave St. Patrick's Chamber. We're now in Queen's Gallery. I, can, I think I can hear John. I hope I can hear John ahead. Have you been downstairs again? Have you been downstairs again? No. Oh, are we going to go down? Sir? Are we going to go downstairs again? You're coming? Yeah. That's right. It's a lot of steps. Right. A lot of steps. This takes us deep down into the rock, and we can see this is pages raised, constructed or opened on the 4th of October 1940. And it's just so hard to get the scale of this place. Cut probably at 45 degrees into the rock. This is our third or fourth time down here today. More concrete blast walls. We've got we did we did go up there but the the rats scared us off if I'm honest. The only rats we've seen here. And here we have what we believe is an anti-tank position. Um, there's 17 pounder written um, above it, but we're not we're not sure exactly what that is. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen if I can remember uh, and find out what it is. Uh, another machine gun position here, we think. So we think this may have uh, may have been a Lewis gun position. Uh, and after we look, we look at some of the writing, we have number two LMG post um, or LMG port. Uh, we also have them in blue. Um, some some key ranges I think they are probably for the for the anti-tank gun. Now there is an incredible map. If we sneak up here. Now there is a there is a pigeon in this hole, so we're gonna try not to start the pigeon. And here we go. Incredibly detailed a well-preserved range card with ranges and bearings for the position for the gun that would have been mounted here. There's so many of these little features remain in the rock, especially along this, this part of the northern defences. And there's one more little feature or all of you, like me, Northern Irish out there, that we found. And we have in the wall McCulloch Royal Ulster Rifles. You can see it just there and there. So, yeah, so the Royal Ulster Rifles, or at least somebody from the Royal Ulster Rifles, was here at some stage. All right, let's, let's make our way back up these phenomenal stairs. Ooh, wow. We're now in Queen's Gallery, Southwest, 1789. And as a gallery, this corridor was punctuated with both firing positions and exits uh, into the, uh, the sort of a, a pl platform uh, like the front.
there's more of these little chambers and structures built within the cave. It's actually the, the lime plaster, the thin bricks that have been used in construction. I'd say this would be part of the 18th century construction. And interlocking chambers, some of which at the moment I have no idea what their purpose was. So here are some of these gallery firing positions I was mentioning. And actually it looks like there's also a an old position for a stove. Coal or wood burning here. Let me just add a little bit of a little bit of warmth to these positions. It's more random modern graffiti. Yeah, we couldn't we couldn't quite work out what this chamber was for with the raised bed in here. Uh, we think these these horizontal roof steel roof uh, beams were probably were probably just for that for a roof to stop moisture and condensation dripping. Another another one of the galleries. I think this is the fourth gallery. Right at the end, and this is one of the one of the larger blast walls, uh, blast traps. So you can see the the thickness of the concrete and the columns, convoluted route we need to take to get out of here. And then this is this is outside. This is where the the larger artillery would have been. And then we have to make our way up here, inside the gallery, um, I'll make our way back out the other end. So Queen's Lines East Gallery, we've just, we've just exited. Um, and in here, the stunning spiral staircase, which I'll be honest, uh, neither of us had dared to go up. There's a lot of, lot of mud and rock fall at the moment. But you can see that's five, six stories high. Um, that would just be a really quick way to get the troops from the upper positions to the lower positions, or vice versa. Uh, much like the the staircase at Dover Castle. And I think what's going to be the final uh, feature of this video is this incredible searchlight position still in place. So we have the, the concrete and steel aperture in the window with great views over the bay and the harbour. We have, the comp we have the components of the searchlight itself. Uh, the air vent or the hole at the top above the aperture is to extract the fumes from the carbon rod as it was burning. But most importantly, and most interestingly, it still rotates. I'll be honest, when it was first rotated this afternoon and I wasn't in the room and didn't know it was here, it was genuinely Quite a terrifying sign. So, there we have it. A walk through of the northern defences on Gibraltar. So, if I turn my torch off and go up these steps, hopefully, you can see some of the great view. We can see the airfield. Well, I can see the airfield. Um, and all of this reclaimed land that the apartment blocks and um, a new resort's built on. So, I hope you enjoyed 
that video something a bit different from a trip to to Gibraltar uh, remember like subscribe and I will see you in the next video